Right, a warm welcome to a pod full of saints on the 28th of April 2022. I don't know what number it is, is it 43, is it? Something like that, I expect, for the season. Uh, with myself, David Tavner, over there, just having a sip of water, I think it is. That looks a funny colour. Is uh, Lee Wood. It's holy water. Good evening, David. Good evening, Jacob. Good evening to both of our viewers. Good evening, good evening. <laughs> yes, the uh, Jacob is uh, Jake Ellicott. Evening, Hello. Jake. Hello, Dave. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all well. And you're back in your home because you've been elsewhere for a little while, haven't you? I am. I'm tucked away in the corner for now behind about 100 boxes. But, you know, nothing will get me in the way of a pod full of saints. So. That's the spirit. You won't be saying that in about an hour's time, mate. I know that. <laughs> right. We, we've only got one match to look back on today. It's the uh, last half of this game down at Prince's Park. Away to... Uh, we came down close today. Gosh, you were, you're, in for a, you're in for a shock. We're in the top two, yeah. Um, <laughs> Dartford. Uh, uh, it was our uh, 50th game of the season. We'll get a few stats out of the way. Uh, it was our 137th uh, 3-1 defeat, not of the season. Um, it, it included the 400th goal conceded in our 288 games under Ian Allenson. And from his 228 league games now, he's got... A points per game ratio of 1.46 which is the same as David Howell had in his 59 games right let's get back to Dartford then previous Monday Easter Monday they lost at home to Maidstone first time they'd lost at home in the league this season surrendered the final unbeaten home record in view of that or whatever reason Manchester Steve King made five changes for us our visit last Saturday and I don't know what you thought Jay but I actually thought Dartford looked a bit flat and I felt they were there for the taking but um let ourselves down a bit when we got close to goal no I totally agree I thought it's not just the team I thought the whole atmosphere was very flat apart from really St Albans City fans to be honest with you walking in the ground about 10 minutes to kick off expecting a good loud crowd it was terrible it was almost like a pre-season friendly atmosphere really or a game that didn't mean anything um, it was awful. And, you know, Dartford, as you said, they weren't great. And I think it, again, feeds into what we've said a few times this season. It's not a great league, is it, really, this season? Apart from maybe the top two, maybe top three, if we're being generous, the league isn't particularly strong. You know, you could take on almost any team on any given day. And, yeah, Dartford, you know, did they deserve the win? I wouldn't necessarily say so. But, sadly, it was defensive mistakes from surprise, surprise, set pieces, which I don't know how many times we've mentioned in recent weeks, um, that cost us. We played Dartford on the opening day of the season. They beat us by the same score down the park. And I thought first half down the park, they looked really good. Second half, they were, well, whether they thought the game was sewn up and that was it. Of course it wasn't. They relied on two injury time goals. So they weren't impressive in the second half there. They weren't impressive Saturday. But yes, they did deserve the win, Jake, because uh, our goal, Excellent work by Zane Banton. Perfect cross. Blistering header from Sean Jeffers. It was a great goal. It was our only effort on target. Um, so we can't say they didn't deserve to win. Oh, I don't know. Liam Soul had a strike tipped away by the keeper, Dave. Come on. You're getting Jeez. forget getting forget for in your old age. But, I mean, that is yeah. a fair point, you know. But then Dartford didn't have many other chances. I hope, you know, a draw maybe would have been fair. But, sadly, you know, it was just poor, really. I say Sean took his goal well. But on the other hand, he missed a couple of chances at 3-1 as well that he probably should have at least hit the target with. But it's just a tale of really our season, isn't it? You know, we have good periods and then defensively we go poorly and that's it really. That's that's all she wrote. So, yeah, very disappointing. But at the same time, did I expect anything to be travelling to Dartford? Not really. We did play some good football at times. Um, I agree with you also, for times, it did also have a feel of being either a pre-season friendly or an end-of-season game. Um, a final ball let us down. Yes, you did. You're right about uh, Soul Shot. I've forgotten about that one. I think I was asleep by then. Um, and, and actually, he did one or two good things when he came on, and he should be should have been doing more of that during the season because there's a good player in there, but we haven't seen it this season. There's no two ways about that. I thought Alex Langshire did well again in his second game back in the side. And there were one or two good bits here and there, but our final ball, it, it, it just wasn't there, and it, and it let them off the hook. Um, and the same old problem is it goals again. All right, Sean scored. It's only the second game in nine. He's actually scored in. But uh, we're not going to criticise him after a season that he's had. But when you look elsewhere, poor old Joe Neal. Um, 
a striker, 13 <laughs> games for us now, no goals yet. Mitchell Vice, Reese, Weiss, whatever you want to call it, one goal in 25. Now, Mitch has had plenty of good games this season. We're not going to knock him for that, but he's a forward, one goal in 25. Reese just highlight our problems. Zane, he's had good games here and there. He's got two in 32 in the league this season. Without Sean, where would we be? I know we've said it before. I don't know. It's, it's, it's... We, we'll be relegated, fellas. <laughs> no, it's quite as simple. Um, I think that Goddard looked lively in spells, but again, it was just too easy for, for sort of Dartford to dictate and glide through the middle of the park at times. Much improved performance. There's still a little bit fight of fight left in the boys, but unfortunately it's come late and we're still on the end of a defeat. So, you know, what can we, what can we say, really? Jake mentioned about defensive frailties there. Um, Kieran Murta got the first two goals for them. Um, his first two goals of the season. Now, he's quite a big lump. Difficult to miss. But, yet again, headed home from a corner. We didn't pick him up. S- second one, a f- set piece again. We didn't go with him and he got a boot to it. And Michael Johnson just clearly was not expecting the shot and he sort of fumbled it in, really. Um, and we had the same old thing at corners. We took everybody back. First few co- couple of corners we had, not we had many, um, Dartford kept three players up. So that took four players out and the fifth one not far away. Yet we go every man in defence and we haven't got anybody in there who can win a header, it seems, at times. Perhaps I don't think it's an uh, exaggeration to say that every single time the opposition get a corner or a free kick anywhere in the final, final third, there's a genuine sense of panic in terms of supporters because... You know, there is a very good possibility that they can at least get a shot on target, if not possibly a goal. Um, the first goal for Dartford, I mean, John McKenna, Christ, I mean, the fellas come right across him. McKenna's a tall fella, you know, he should be just knocking these fellas out of the way for fun. Um, he's fallen away from me the, the last sort of six months, really, for me, McKenna. Um, but he's not the only one, you know, we've got four defenders back there, eight if you include when we have set pieces, and we still can't manage it. So something is fundamentally wrong there. Yeah. We, we, we listened to Ian in his post-match. Just when we sort of talk about the players applying themselves in a game, just the applying logic to these post-matches could be a really good start because Ian's come out and said we've got the perfect squad, the squad's great, but we're too inconsistent and we're making loads of um, our mistakes. So, and then he said, well, you know, it's, he thinks we should still be in the playoffs, but yet we're in the bottom two, is it, in terms of form guide? I mean, this, it's laughable at times, but the performance was improved, fellas, but still, we're, we're, we're talking about another, another defeat. Yeah, and we've now got a minus goal difference at long last. Um, oh, our run. One win in 11. We take out those six games we won back in September, October. And the points we picked up in the remaining, what, 31 games is, is less than a point a game. Um, it's playoff form, apparently, Tavs. Yeah, it's ridiculous, isn't it? If things go right, we can still be in there at the end of the weekend. We won't be, but... What was it? What does it say about the league? <laughs> I, I, you know what? I'm not that concerned about the state of the league. I'm more con- concerned about the state of the team. Um, but we will be sitting there in the summer saying, "Well, you know what? If we picked up another you know, eight points, if we just got, if we didn't lose to that team or draw with that team, we where could we have been? We could have been higher." And people, I go on about the playoffs. It just extends our. It extends our season for a game because there's no one, there's no one above us I can see us beating. So, you know, I don't see the point. Yes, is that is that the the pinnacle now of our achievements every season after season, just get into the playoffs? You don't want to challenge for them, you don't want to go up. You know, there's just the mentality, this this mentality about getting in the playoffs, getting in the playoffs. That's all well and good, but when you're getting shafted, once you do get in there, it's not a lot of point really, is it? Well, we're getting regularly shafted uh, before we get in there. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> it, it isn't going to happen. We're not going to be in there, and I think people should accept it. Well, the mathematicians might argue against it. Um, you can't see Dawkins letting us off a hook on Saturday, can you? I don't know. I mean, we do. We we play better against the footballing side, so so, so to speak. But 
this season hasn't that hasn't sort of come to fruition at all. I can't see anything other than a Dorking win, but I just want some fight. I mean, I just want us to be competitive. I want us to at least try to win football games. I want us to stop conceding stupid goals from corners when we've got six foot eight central defenders. I want us to see us have more than one or two shots on target. I want us to be this Northern City we know we can be. But unfortunately, uh, you know, it's been too many, too many games and, uh, and too many people hiding away um, in big, big games. And we don't deserve to be in the playoffs. Can't argue with that, Jake, can you? No, I suppose that's the mad thing about Saturday, isn't it? You know, at one point, I mean, when we were drawing one all, we were, what, one point off the playoffs, thanks to results of elsewhere. I mean, it's just bizarre, this division this season. No one really wants that final seven place. I mean, fair play to Chippenham. They're hanging on and now they've, they've leapfrogged us and haven't. And we, I think we all agreed that haven't would probably run away with it now. But, you know, they had a poor defeat. Well, not a poor defeat, poor result at the weekend at Welling. Um and yeah, I mean, I don't know how we're still in. I suspect we probably won't be by the end of Saturday against Dorking, but you never know. Um, but yeah, like Lee says, you know, the inconsistency, the lack of real drive since Christmas generally, and probably even that full-time whistle at Forest Green, it's just been totally different, hasn't it? And we've never recovered from what we had in that good run. And Dave, this is a stat for you to work out at the end of the season. I'd love what percentage of our goals have come from set pieces or goals conceded come from set pieces it is um i suspect it's probably a little bit higher than usual but then maybe maybe that is just the panic that we sense i mean on saturday at dartford almost every set piece and almost every defensive situation city fans were just shouting clear it go on just clear it get it out and you know it was similar at billy and yeah so it's just for, for it son yeah, yeah. About. yeah. <laughs> but it's old same... school park football <laughs> it's the same old frailties and issues that we pinpointed December, January, how long ago? But the squad's happening. perfect though, Jake. The squad's perfect, mate. <laughs> well, how perfect is that squad? We've banged on all season about we haven't strengthened during the season and, and it's plain to see. Everybody can see it. And yet, Dartford can make five changes for one game and still come out 3-1 winners without too many problems against a side that is supposedly a, a playoff challenger. Um, that's how big the gap is between us and the top of the table. Yeah, and I think that I think that gap is understandable because we know Dartford have got a big budget. We know what Steve King brings with him money wise. We'll, we will never be able to replicate that. But it, it it does, you know, on a smaller level, you've still got to have that strength in depth in the squad to try and compete. And we just haven't in certain areas this season, you know. And I think that's the reality. And I don't think many people could really argue. I mean, even one of our loanees that we signed, Avan Jones, he got recalled recalled by Luton last week, didn't he? Before the Dartford game, he's gone now. So. So we're going to spend the final few games playing either Clark or Deja at right back, you know, which goes back to the same issues we had back after Devonte broke his leg. So yeah, it's it's just bizarre, isn't it? The whole situation with the transfers this season. I think a lot of supporters will have a lot of questions. They did at the fans forum, and I think they still do. And I don't know if we'll ever get full answers on that. As you say, uh, Evan Jones has gone back to Luton Town, and uh, lucky them. Um, Cameron, jo- Cameron Green, rather, not been seen the past two games. Um, any, any word on him? What's happening there? I think he might have, have some sort of injury. I'm not sure. Um, hadn't heard anything. But then it just seems silly to be, if, if he hasn't, not using him or putting him in the squad. So I'm sure Ian's got his reasoning. But, yeah, it just doesn't... Well, I mean, to be fair, I think both of them haven't really lived up to what we expected, have they? No, nowhere near it. Talking of injuries, Tom Bender's been on the bench for a long time, so since he had a one-match ban for getting sent off at Concord. Um, I've not heard anything about him being injured, have you? No, no, I haven't heard anything, but again, maybe it's, it's, it's difficult to know, isn't it, at the minute, who's who's fit and who's not really, who's available? Well, to the club, but he's not very good at its PR. Uh, we were talking just before we started, Jake, didn't we? A couple of our players were on loan at, uh, didn't you say, at Dunstable, uh, and had a playoff match the other day. No word on the website, nothing on Twitter or anything, so nobody could have gone along and supported them. So they did post something on Twitter on the Tuesday morning, but before that, I had no idea that Sam Meeks and Aaron Austin were AFC, at AFC Dunstall because it's particularly... Well, both of them, you know, they've both made first-team appearances this season, and Aaron Austin in that game at home to Hemel might have only been 10 minutes, but at least it was a bright 10 minutes, and he, he showed a little bit of fight and energy. But obviously, now we know why neither of them have featured in the sort of final Are you running. suggesting that previous uh, media team incumbents would have 
relayed that information up, Jacob? Uh, well, I wouldn't know because the amount of people that called us incompetent when we were doing it would probably argue that we wouldn't. And so. what, the other one is sitting right there as well, <laughs> mate. So yeah. like... <laughs> he's our biggest <laughs> critic and now he's our best friend. <laughs> David, special friend, podcast <laughs> friend, David. Um, a genuine question. I bumped into um, a fan who I've not seen for a while yet. He said to me today, and he wants. He said to me the cliche thing: Are the players already got? Are, are the players already on the beach? Are oh, they've already got one eye on their holidays? And it does seem like that. Although it would suggest that there's still a little bit of fight left in the boys. No, I don't think it's a case of the players being on the beach already. Um, I think it's a case of a side not being good enough. Simple as that. There's yeah. some good players in there. Um, but, but I think also we have uh, confusing tactics uh, this season, which I don't think have helped. Um, I think our substitutions have been strange as well, the timing of them and everything. But there's lots of things to look at there with an eye on next season. Um, it seems like the more coaches we've got on, the more confusing our football has become. Um, and it's, it's, I don't know, they try and make it too clever. Is it's it a case just of us? The... That's football in general. That's not just us, of course. Of course it is. But, you know, so, so we were, Jake and I were sort of talking to a fella in the pub and he, he suggested it was almost a case of they're trying to make the players fit into this particular system where they're not sort of renowned for that particular role, trying to make them players that they aren't or in the positions that they're not used to, rather than playing to the players' strength and getting the players, rather than getting the players to play into a system, they're just trying to get the players they have to hand and trying to make them something that, that they're not. And it's, I think that's, that's where the confusion comes in because we've seen Goddard, we've seen probably half, half a dozen good, good players played out of position or in a different sort of role this season, which I don't really mind because I think players at this level have that adaptability, especially when you are the quality that Goddard is. Um, but over the course of time, you've got to play to the player's strengths and especially when you only have a handful of really, really key players at your disposal, it's sort of, you know... It can only go one way. It'd be interesting to know what the system actually is. I think we've been too defensive on the ball, not off the ball, when we're on the ball. Um, early season, we used to break with speed mm. and we looked a real threat. Now we get that ball and we don't go with speed. It's all about keeping the ball. We go back 10 times if we have to. Mm. We're not great to watch. We know that. We're not great to watch at all in the second half of the season. Um, and I don't know why it changed. It's the same players pretty much. Yeah, I think it's genuine. I think two points for me there. You know, that Lee, you mentioned Johnny Goddard. You know, he did get played out of position at times. But then that fed back to us because we didn't sign another central midfielder, wasn't it, really? That's why it mm. happened. And then when you've not got, again, a squad that's deep enough, you do have to play players out of position. But yeah, Dave, as well, you talk about that, that football. When we do go forward, you know, in the last couple of months, it's more often been long balls and looking for the channels, etc. And I know the pitches are more difficult and the pitch at Dartford wasn't great. But first half, there was a lot of long balls that Sean Jeffers was just never, ever going to get to and were aimed at him sort of widely and sort of just would never get there. So, yeah, the style of play is a shadow of what it was up until, again, probably full time at Forest Green. I think one good example was the Hampton match. Um, Alan Julian, their keeper, kicked the ball out, level with a penalty spot late in the game. Now, bearing in mind, both sides needed to go for the win to get the two extra points to get back into the playoff places. Um, so we have got this throw. It's never with a penalty spot. Without a Hampton player touching that ball from our throw, it's back in Michael Johnson's arms. Now, that typifies how we've played the second half of the season. We've been too negative. Um, be bolder. Go for goals. Never know, you might score one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I know someone that met the Forest Green manager the other night. Um, at an awards um, dinner, EFL, and he, he sort of spoke about St Albans. He said the Forest Green manager could not believe we have not kicked on since that, that result in the FA Cup. He said some of the football you played that night was absolutely unbelievable and what has happened since. And the supporter sort of said, well, can't really explain it. I don't know what happened. And the Forest Green manager said, well, I'm to just as confused as well because the football you played against us was absolutely brilliant. And I don't think we've seen it. And like you say, Dave, that negativity and going backwards, of course you need to do it in some games. But do you need to do it in every single game? Not really. Well, I would say, fellas, sorry. sorry. No, you go first, Lee. I was just going to say, so I was chatting to this fan and it was almost as though 
you know, we've, we've sort of put all of our good performances into the Forest Green game. And he said, and he mentioned the Forest Green game. So, well, that's great, mate. But that was, that, that was you know, months ago. Um, unfortunately, as good as a day as that was, I think for me personally, looking at the season overall, it's going to be remembered for the games we didn't turn up for as opposed to that one game that we did. I think history will ignore all the bad games. In 50 years' time, people looking back will say that match was bigger than the win over Brentford because Brentford was struggling down the bottom of the league. Forest Green were at the top of it and they were flying and uh, we beat them. And it was in front of the cameras and everything. So that will dwarf everything else about this season and everything else will be pushed away. Just those of us who were there for the rest of the season <laughs> know what it was actually like. And, and talking to Forest Green, they've got a good way of dealing with that result, as you're probably aware. Um, it doesn't appear on the results page <laughs> of their website and nor the uh, match report section. We should They're try just, that. We should what? try that at City. Just not have any of, any of like, the losses. <laughs> Our season's going to be like 10 games long. It'd be brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, much spare space. <laughs> so much spare space, space on that website then to put all the news out, which isn't getting out there. <laughs> Deary me. <laughs> well, so, but at least we've got a nice, easy game next up. So, so oh, you know, ease yeah. us back into the equation. Yeah. How, how did Dorkin get on last Saturday, Dave? Any idea? Was it? Uh... They're having a terrible time. Their last four games, 5-0 win against Slough, 3-0... Uh, against Chippenham, 4-0 against Welling United, the 7-2 as you hinted at there, Jake, against Concord Rangers with Alfie Rutherford scoring another hat-trick, four more goals for him. Um, mm. It'd be a daughter. It'd be a daughter, wouldn't it? How many, how many uh, free kicks did they have, Taz? How many corners did they have? How many throw-ins did the number three have? Uh, they had more corners and shots than we've had all season, I think. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it's um, it's certainly a difficult one, isn't it? But I remember two months ago speaking to supporters going into that run of games of Braintree, Chelmsford, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, Concord saying we need to pick up points now because our final nine, few... nine, nine points, nine points. Yeah, we we need to pick up points now because our final few games are very very difficult. You know, <laughs> when you go into Dartford, when you got Dorking at home, and then you got to go to Oxford on on Bank Holiday Monday, that's very mm. difficult. And we knew that Dorking would be in the title race, and they still are. They're just clinging on for now, and that's why they'll be desperate for a win on Saturday. We knew it was going to be difficult, and surprise, surprise, we're here, and it's going to be very, very hard. And our home form does not fill me with confidence, I'll be frank, let alone anything Consistent, else. Consistent, mate. No, that's, that is very true. But, you know, Dorking, you know, at the minute, it doesn't look like they're going to win the league, but they are in such a hot form. Fair play to them. And, Dave, if we think back to the first game of the season down at their place a game ifs and buts we possibly could have got something from that game bar some late goals but I think it's going to be a bit more difficult on Saturday there, that's what three games to go they're four points behind uh, Maystone they've now got a superior goal difference helped by last Saturday of course so um, they're going to go for a win on Saturday obviously they're not just settling for a place in the playoffs but they can still win that league right. mean, it's, unlike, it's unlikely Maystone would have to slip up but Chances there for them. Absolutely. It'd be nice uh, if we go for the winners as well, though, fellas, rather than settling for. We, we, we've got to, haven't we? <laughs> well, you know, call me old fashioned, but I actually want to see us win a game or two. <laughs> um, hasn't happened a great deal over the last few months, boys. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Saturday, big crowd. We've got our friends from Norway coming over. So, um, if the players don't want to sort of do it for us, they can do it for some. Uh, for some sexy blonde Norwegians that are going to be joining us on, on the terraces as well. <laughs> Hopefully that may um, add a different dynamic to the game. Yeah, but we've got to go for the win though, haven't we, Lee? You know, like you said, you've got to do it because, <laughs> because if you don't win, it's probably going to play offs over, really, bar other results on Saturday. And, you know, they already it's already tight, but you've got to pick up three points and that's why both teams have got to go for it. I think supporters will be happier seeing us trying to get that win that we need rather than playing as we did against Maystone and Edgley at home where we just sat back and waited for our fate. We defended very well in both games, it should be said. Um, but that's not what's needed Saturday, is it? We've got to go for it. If it costs us, well, chances are we're going to lose anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, but I want to applaud the team off knowing they've given absolutely yes. everything. Exactly. I, 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 I don't want to... I don't really want one of these new wave of fans who just cut for no matter what, you know, I don't want that. I want to see 
purpose. I want to see passion from both terrace and pitch. And fine, if we get done, we get done. But I want to see us get done taking the game to them. Because as you say, Tavs, it's not fun to watch, mate. We're not fun to watch. Um, but we can be. And we know we can be because mm-hmm. it's, it's happened at spells early on this season. But those are long, distant memories. If we can go out this season on a last bit of hurrah, playing some good football with our good players, then who knows, mate? Because Dawkins, they're going to come at us and they're going to leave holes in doing so. It was mentioned earlier about the tough running we've got with these three games to go. After Dawkins on Monday, we're away to Oxford City. <coughs> They've now cemented their place in the playoffs, but they're, they're going to want to... Uh, well, they're not going to get a home game now. Oh, could they? Anyway, um, they're going to want to cement their place as high as possible. And they've got a certain Joey Schifano. He's got 17 league goals this season. Uh, he scored against us in the Trophy and the league, didn't he, I think? Um, mm. Two games earlier. So, uh, there's a bit riding on that game, although in many ways it could be a dead rubber for both clubs by then. Could be. I mean, Oxford at home, you have to say, very good performance from the Saints. Should have won that, really, by three or four goals. Sure, Jeffers. A rare afternoon for him, evening even, missing some absolute <coughs> sitters. Um, and of course, in the trophy, we rolled him over 4 1 with a very mixed match team, didn't we? So, oh. actually, probably against Oxford, we put in some of our better performances this evening, probably. Um, so, but then Monday, a lot of it's dependent on how Saturday goes. If we lose by quite a few clear goals, we don't come out, then the players aren't going to feel confident at all. And as you say, Dave, the playoffs could be all over by then. We just don't know. So you've got to take it one game at a time, isn't it? But I can say that Oxford, at Oxford again, we'll have really good support again, no matter what. The Norwegians will be there, making lots of noise, having fun. And we'll just see what happens. On that lovely plastic pitch. <laughs> Which you're a big fan of, Tabs. Well, it's one of those where they got those black nodules and um, it just seems a mess of them, doesn't it? Somewhere under that is some, uh, is a plastic pitch. What are you going to do with some football? <laughs> Mm. God, do you remember during lockdown last year, Jake? We went there. It was a nil-nil draw. Yeah, how bad was that game? <laughs> Awful. And the year before, it was a three-all, wasn't it? So I mean, we could get either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you both feeling confident to predict the win Saturday? Honestly, I can't see anything other than Dorking win. But what I would like to see is us play with purpose and go out and leave it all on the pitch because. I'm just fed up of us getting our tummies tickled every single time, you know, teams try to out-bully us and out-muscle us. So I, I want to say we're, we're, we're going to get something, but I, I can't see anything other than talking win. You predicted a win most weeks, I think, this season, Jake. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you, you're going to go for it again? Yeah, free go one, on, Jake. Jake. Free go one, Jake. Jake. Easy, Absolute easy. Absolute mug. I mean, <laughs> but, that, is, that, is pure, that is purely based upon... I hope the players, like you say, Dave, uh, Lee, put some fighting effort and put in a performance that thanks the supporters on Saturday for their support this season. I know we've got Tom Bridge to go still, but the support at Clarence Park has been tremendous this season on the whole. I don't know how we're still getting crowds of 15, 60, 100 based upon recent performances. <laughs> so yeah. if they want to thank us, mate, they can just end, end the season now <laughs> and let us just, <laughs> you know, what I mean? just put us out of our misery we, like we, a, like straight we, dogs. We did have a, a couple of tweets saying that are you guys not looking forward to us to lose the next couple so you don't have to do an extra pod for the playoffs? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But given that great support, we'll probably have a supporters coach at Oxford, won't we, Jake? David, have we not discussed this before? This is pessimism, isn't it? Yes, it is. But we're not negative. No, it's not pessimism. Is it not? Positive, tr- positive trying to get supporters to games. Right. So here is our man in the know, in the trust inner inner circle. Jacob, is it going to be a coach to Oxford? Tell no, the supporters. Watch him, watch him squirm. I believe there is like a mini coach going to Oxford that's been sold what is out. That? A mini bus? Yeah, mini bus of some sort. I don't, so- I don't know the exact details, um, but I believe when we turn up to Oxford on Monday, there might be a mini bus there. I'm not sure. But I'm not going to be on it. I'm going to be on the train, I suspect, suffering. On the juicy train. <laughs> on the juicy train. Lee, we, Dave, we also had another question asking if you've ever had a curry before. So could you confirm or deny if you've had a curry before? Got something really mild, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any- Corm- korma. <laughs> korma. What's the one after that? A chicken stomach or other? So no is the answer then, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Well, not, not one that's going to blow your head off, no. Yeah, <laughs> me. Masala. Is it masala? Is that one chicken masala? Yeah. I don't know. 
Right. Shall we predict Oxford? <laughs> Go on then. Um, two one Saints. What's <laughs> well, a You going to top that? You going to top it, Lee? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to go one all. <laughs> this is a positivity podcast. Well, that's not bad. No, I didn't see many defeats there. It's good. Very good. Um, mm. I've got some anniversaries here. Should oh, we God. run through them? Go on. Um, tw- we're, we're recording this 28th of April. So on the 28th of April, 1984, Steve Oliver scored the only goal away to Epping Town that won us promotion. From the Ishmael League Division 2, we spent just one season in it. And uh, that is the, roughly the team for the season sitting behind me there. You might have heard of some of these. Neil Dudman, Rob Smale, Mark Pearson, Dave Leonard, Terry Benning, Paul Marriott, Steve Oliver, Lloyd Ryan, John Watt, Steve Patterson, Ray Tucker and Gary Keane, who I was talking about with a couple of supporters um, last Saturday. Uh, another one you'll both remember, April 28th. 2007, uh, Jimmy Sanger scored a winner against Weymouth in our last game in Conference <laughs> National. Oh. Jimmy Sanger. Oh, my goodness. That, that Absolute was a, scenes. That was a fun afternoon. <laughs> well, another fun afternoon, 28th of April, 2018. Uh, after seven previous visits to Twerton Park, we hadn't scored a goal. Zane Banton scored for us in a 2-1 defeat. Uh, against Bath. Uh, some familiar names on that side for us. Tom Bender, David Noble, uh, Percy was there, Kian Giovanni, Solomon Sambu, and Sam Merson. Did you see that photo last week of him with Hamworth Villa? <laughs> now, I am the last person to talk about a rotund figure. However, I'm not playing football. Um, so, but yeah, when, when that came up, I'm like, good Lord. I mean, I like Sam. I can't believe he's yeah. going to be doing any sort of like back backflips and somersaults with that gut, but uh, bless him. Good play. Well, good play. Uh, Hamworth uh, unbeaten in the league this season. Tr- a tremendous achievement, especially as we turned them over last What league summer. is that, Dave? Is this the Dog and Duck National Division 3? I think it's a, it's a beauty of what's it, league, whatever it was. Yeah. But um, that full marks for him. Um, and Sam scored 29 goals. So getting back. Still knocking them in. <laughs> Get him back. I've seen him down at Oakland at six aside, banging him in. Let's get him back. Is this the Oakland's five aside that you broke someone's leg in last week, Jacob? <laughs> yes, technically. What happened, Jay? We, we saw you at Yeah, I don't think you were going to be sort of getting away with that, Jacob. It was a terrible accident, really. You know, I hope the bloke's all right. Uh, but yeah. No, 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 no. Terrible accident is Tavs crashing the car in some backstreet lane in Essex. You taking someone out, Jake the Widowmaker Ellicott. It doesn't sound a particularly big accident, mate, to me. Is the bloke okay? I don't know. I haven't heard. You've not even checked up on him? Oh, it's ice cold, man. I Jesus. Don't, I don't know. Well, I think he's all right. He's, yeah. If he, he dies, he dies. I lost sure of being yeah. bundled into the back of an ambulance. Uh, so... <laughs> But you didn't yes. sort of go with him. You didn't check up on him. You didn't ask for his details afterwards. No, in retrospect, I probably should have. Um, but, you reckon? Uh, yeah, yeah. But just he... out of courtesy of breaking the bloke's leg, he's probably like you know self-employed. He's probably got five kids. He's probably from Hemel, so you've just basically ruined his entire life for him because you can't tackle properly. Hey, it was a terrible. He ran into me, so it was just an accident. These things happen, you know. I'm in goal. Not, not my fault, really. So. He ran into but, you. Yeah, but I hope he's all we right. You could have missed you, could he, for quite a sake. But yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> outrageous. Me. You know how, how laid back he is, uh, Lee, so he's not going to be bored about his poor other bloke whose career may be over. It's like when we had the car crash on the way back from Chelmsford, um, he, he gets out, he, he, he couldn't bother how I was. He, he's on the phone to somebody or other, and then he sees cars coming, so he turns his phone on to um, Torch, and he's waving at people. I don't know what they were supposed to think of it, but he landed three airplanes. <laughs> So it's like a Springsteen concert when he was like, you know, trying to. Right. Hey. Before Thanks, this podcast sir. descends into even more of a farce than what it normally is. Um, just I thank you again for all the messages and tweets and uh, emails we've been getting in over the last week or so. Uh, we hope this one's been a bit more upbeat than previous efforts. Um, if you do want to get in touch with us, Jake, do you want to give him the Twitter handle, my friend? Yep, at a pod full of saints. We've got the email address as well, which will be in the description and on the video. Um, yeah, thank you very much for all watching. I don't know why you're still watching. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. I'm scared of you now, mate. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, and I, we all really appreciate, it, don't we? So yeah, we thank you very much. We and too. Me too. Is that is that the end of this week's edition? I think, I think it ended about a quarter of an hour ago. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see you all at Clarence Park on Saturday then for another. We're week. all off for a chicken tikka masala. So until then, take yeah! care, fellas. <laughs> Bye, see you Saturday. Take care. See you later.